Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We praise you, exalt you, we worship you, we lift you up, we extol you. God, you are marvelous in our eyes. You are wonderful. You are mighty. You are holy. God, we just worship you and exalt you. Lord, we love you that you are rising up, Lord. Your presence is drawing close to us. Lord, and we ask, Lord, that you will just move, move, move upon us tonight, God. Lord, that we would know and sense your presence and your moving amongst us, Holy Spirit. Lord, you are awesome. You're awesome, awesome in this place, awesome on this Zoom. Hand it over to you, Lord. We give it to you, God. We trust you, God. We give you everything, Lord. In your mighty, mighty, mighty and holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Anyway, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just bless you and we ask your blessing over us and over Nikita as a speaker tonight, God, that you will touch her, anoint her, release your fire through her. Lord, we ask and pray in your holy name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. So... Good to see all of you guys. Good to see you, Nikita. All of a sudden I thought, well, I don't have a message if she doesn't show up. <laughs> but I always have a message. Anyway, so um, I'm not, I was in Ottawa, suffered through a lot of pain, persevere, press through. It was so worth it. It was actually incredible. My hope went up quite a few levels. I was just so encouraged. And I'm going to probably share on that next week and give a report. I don't want to take much of Nikita's time. But one, one takeaway I got from this meeting, I went, it's the National Prayer Breakfast. Um, with all the Prime Minister was there, all the dignitaries, and they said it was the largest prayer breakfast in the history of Canada and any nation. I don't know if that's true, but that's what he said. And it was uh, 1,300 people there for that breakfast. A lot of MPs, a lot of pastors, a lot of lawyers, every kind of person there represented. And um, I don't know these people. I don't know their heart. But just in, through the process of the, the, the breakfast, and I was there for the dinner too, just through the worship and different things that were shared, I saw their heart. These people are sold out to God. And the, my takeaway, I felt God gave me this scripture with Elijah, where Elijah was complaining and saying, God, you know, there's no one. As I'm the only one. And, um, and God's answer to him was, I have 7,000 in this city that you know not of. And I felt hope rising in me because I saw the 7,000 and he probably has 7,000 in every city across this nation and across the United States for sure. He has his people and who are, and it was so exciting to see MPs, ministers of parliament on fire for God. I'm like, wow, wow, wow. This is so amazing. Preaching the word. This guy who was um, the host, who was the MP, he, he, um, he's a minister. He's in the Senate and he, he got so fired up at one time. He's like, oh my gosh, this is church. We're going to preach fire. God is hitting us. And I was like, wow. Okay, God, we know you're the boss and you're in control. So let hope arise in us for what well, doesn't matter what we see, whether it's America or Canada, it doesn't matter what we see. God is seated on his throne and he is well able to handle everything on this earth. If he's not, it's because he's doing something and he has a plan. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. So Lord, I just bless Nikita tonight. She's a woman of the word, woman of your Bible, Lord, and... Um, I just pray you'd release that word to us tonight and bless us. God, we love hearing from you. I, I can speak for everyone here, God. We are hungry people and um, we love eating at your table. So we are seated and ready to eat in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. So Amen.
It's all yours. Amen. Thank you, Apostle Faith. And it's good to see your face. Um, there's a saying, uh, you don't look like what you're going through. Praise God. This looking at you, I would not think there's any pain, anything, just all peaches and cream. That's how you look tonight. And that is the glory of God upon us. So um, greetings to each of you on tonight. Um, I cannot see you with the screen that I have in front of me. So um, prayerfully, you can hear me good. I was on earlier, Apostle Faith, and my internet kicked me out. So I was working feverishly to get back in. So um, this week and last week and leading up to what we know as the Jewish calendar, Pentecost, um, we are dealing with the theme of Holy Spirit power, Pentecost in that area. And so when Apostle Faith asked me to speak on tonight, she asked me last week, um, or maybe it was week before last week, anyway, when she asked me, I knew I'll be speaking this night. And of course, whenever we speak on behalf of God, we go to God. Amen. We, we, we inquire of him because we want to give the people of God what God is saying. And so what I heard and hearing the Lord say concerning this season that we are in, it's the 40 days leading up to Jesus's ascension. And when I went back and counted from April the 22nd, that's the date that we recognize on this platform as the Jewish uh, Passover, praise God, April 22nd. And when you count up the days, we are now in day 17. May 9th is day 17. And the 40th day will be June the 1st. And then, of course, June the 2nd through June the 11th will be the 10 days leading up to Pentecost on June the 11th. And so as I was, you know, just before the Lord and just really meditating about tonight's message, what the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit is how during these 40 days, what was going on with Jesus and his apostles and disciples? What was going on with them, between them? What was the conversation? How was he yet being with them, preparing them? And so that's the focus on tonight. I've given Trish all of the scriptures from the four gospels as Jesus's appearance to them. And I'm not going to go through all those scripture by scripture, but I will be picking and choosing, primarily spending most of the time tonight, scripturally from Mark account and from John's, but I will be touching on some, some of the scriptures from Matthew and Luke as well. And so as I was sitting um, in God's presence, I was so moved and I you know, ran out and I just, you know, uh, share with my husband what I heard the Holy Spirit saying. He's saying this Pentecost, what we're building up to is going to be beyond what we see in the book of Acts. What do you mean by that, Apostle Nikita? Well, I'm glad you asked. On the day of Pentecost, which we're leading up to, it was 120 people in the upper room, come on. And the scripture says they're in one place with one accord. So as we look now, as we look around, there's more than 120 people. We are already filled with Holy Spirit. We already have our prayer language, come on. We've already been walking this thing out to a certain degree. And so because of what's already been happening, is going to be even greater. And the Lord said that these 40 days is like the finishing touches. When we look at the scripture, when Jesus appeared, he was dealing with them. He was reassuring them. He had to upbraid them for their unbelief. He was yet dealing with some, 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 some stuff, if I can use that terminology, that would, that would hinder them or could hinder them from being fully used, from being fully persuaded. Jesus, and let me go to the scripture. Let's go to Acts 1. And again, we're dealing with the 40 days. We're dealing with the 40 days. What was going on 
in those 40 days. And as the Holy Spirit was saying to me, Nikita, I'm dealing with some stuff. I'm dealing with some, some of the little foxes, some things that, that you need to have um, uh, removed from you. Um, in fact, he said this specifically, he says you need to change your language. You can't talk like you used to talk. Uh, there, there's some things that I'm transitioning in your life. And if I could be totally transparent, you know, when I resigned from my job, there were certain things that I thought financially was going to be in place. Well, it hasn't happened yet. And because I was so used to getting that paycheck, that direct deposit every two weeks in the bank, I didn't even check to see if it was there. Come on. I knew it was going to be there. I knew how much it was going to be. I knew what the income was, what the outcome was going to be. So I didn't scour. I didn't just go through my bank account with a fine tooth comb because I had a general idea of what was there. And so we can say, I can say, and I'm sure you can too, that we know that God is our source. And that's true. He is. But he used different resources. And now that that resource has been removed, my faith has now has to transition to seeing and believing how God is going to use other resources because he's the source. And so he says, Nikita, you have to change your language. So in order to change your language, you have to change your thoughts. Okay? And so that's the area that I'm being refined in. My God. So let's go to the scripture and then I'm going to just use some personal experiences and the word. And it may not be long tonight because I really sense as the Holy Spirit was giving this to me, he want to deal with us tonight on a personal, individual level as we hear him speaking to us as what are some things that he still may have to, you know, refine um, in us. And I remember, I think a couple Weeks ago, Sharon was talking about fear, fear. And I didn't realize it, but that's one of the scriptures the Holy Spirit has really been bringing to me. And I'll get to that in a minute. All right. So I said, let's go to Acts, the first chapter. We're going to read the first three verses because that deals with the 40 days. It says in the, uh, King James, the former treatise, have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. In the Amplified, it says, verse 2, it says, until the day when he ascended, after he threw the Holy Spirit, had instructed and commanded the apostles, special messengers, whom he had chosen. To them also he showed himself alive after his passion, his suffering in the garden and on the cross by a series, come on, of many convincing demonstrations unquestionable evidences and infallible proofs appearing to them during 40 days and talking to them about the things of the kingdom of God. And what I hear Holy Spirit saying unto us on tonight, he is also in these 40 days finishing touches, putting the finishing touches on the bridegroom, putting the fin finishing touches on that warrior soldier. You know, in the, in the military, when we know a battle is about to come up, we're looking at our weapons. We're making sure everything is in order. We're dealing with any last minute intel, whatever we need. So when what we call D-Day comes, we are fully prepared, not getting ready, but we are ready. And so as I was in God's presence, I sense he's saying to us on tonight, I'm getting you ready. There may be some little tweaking, refining that yet needs to be done because I need you fully persuaded. I need you to know that through unquestionable evidence that I am all who I say I am to you. 
And so my area that he's tweaking and refining me is, is believing him for the provision. He said to me when I was yet, you know, making preparations to resign, he says, if you get in position, get in position, meaning resign, then I'm going to expand the vision and then give you provision, give you the provision. So he's already, in fact, this is probably the first full week that I've been in Virginia since I resigned on March 28th. Every week we've been going somewhere doing something for God. And so this is the first week that I've really had just to kind of come back, do some, um, some reflecting and said, okay, God, this is going on. This is not yet happening. So how do I believe you for what you said? Yeah, I, I asked that question. I said, because God, if you're telling me that you're going to send me, and I know if you said it, you're going to provide it, but how, but what do I do? I wait. How do I wait? When you say change my language, how do I change my language? So he says, first of all, you have to check your thoughts. You check your thoughts concerning what the word says. So my area is finance. I don't know what your area may be. It may be healing in your body. I don't know. Do you have a, a clear a clear call of what he's calling you to, what your assignment is? Whatever it is, whatever you may be, some still some questions. He says, I'm using these 40 days to settle it. Maybe you, you question his love, which I can't imagine any of us on this line, on this call, this platform, questioning the love of God. But there may be some things that Satan has spoke to your mind that now you have to wrestle with those thoughts. So he says, the first thing you need to do, Nikita, when you change your language, you have to check your thoughts or your thoughts lining up with the word or your thoughts lining up with what I said to you. If I said to you, I'm going to do this, then that's what I need for you to think on. Think on these things. Because the enemy is going to make sure, and especially for me, I can't speak about anybody but myself. So because I am in my 60s, I know, I know, I know I don't look like it, but I am, okay? And I've been working since I was 12 years old, whether it was babysitting, cashier at the Big T, cashier at the grocery store, Senate page, Air Force, church secretary, teacher, assistant principal, a little bit of here, a little bit there. And so whenever... And I was single for some time, married, but yet single too. And so I was a single mom and I was determined that it was nothing was going to ever fall to the ground. I don't care what I had to do. And so I'm used to looking to myself. And so even now, as I think about some things, so I could always go back and do some substitute teaching. He says, but Nikita, I didn't tell you that. I didn't tell you that. So I need for you in these days, let me help you understand that I'm not looking to you. As Apostle Faith shared with us, we're in this season of rest and we're resting in his grace. We are resting in who he said he is. If he called us to it, he's going to give us everything that we need. But I'm telling you, I'm struggling. I'm being totally transparent with you. I'm struggling because I'm so used to doing it myself. I know God give me strength and wisdom, all that, but I'm used to doing it. And it's so new for me just sitting, believing, receiving. So he says, check your thoughts. He says, and then once you check your thoughts and your thoughts do not line up with the word, either the logos or the rhema, and especially the rhema, he says, you need to change your thoughts. You need to change your thoughts. You need to renew your mind. You need to think on those things. What I said, if I told you I'm going to do it, then that's what you need to say to yourself. God said that he's going to do it. And we got scriptures to back us up. I mean, as Apostle Faith said, I'm a scholar of the word, but I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Oh, I'm taking communion. I understand all oh, what that's doing for me and my body, the redemption. But with this finance thing, this is my test. This is my struggle. This is what he's dealing with me in these 40 days. So you're going to check your thoughts against the word. If it doesn't line up, change your thoughts. Then he says, and when the enemy comes at you, that you need to challenge your thoughts. Come on. You need to challenge. In other words, don't accept. If you know what you're hearing is not of God or from God, don't accept it. 
Refute it. Don't receive it. Don't allow that thing to take root or take, uh, or just, just as we have heard people say, you know, you can't keep the bird from flying over your head, but you don't have to let him build a nest. Don't meditate on anything that's not of God. And then lastly, then you have to channel your thoughts. You have to channel it. In other words, you have to continue to say those things just like Abraham or like I said about God, who speak those things that be not as though they were. This is new for me. I'm just going to be honest. This is new for me. I've, I've walked through a whole bunch of wilderness experiences, but with the finances, this is new. And I think I shared with some of you, I was going for my VA disability based on my Gulf War um time and the Gulf War mystery illness, whatever. I applied for it 20 plus years ago. I was denied. I went for it again and found out the second week of April that I was denied again. I was devastated. I was devastated because in my heart, I was believing God that that was going to come through for me and that would be a stream of income. But guess what he said to me? He says, Nikita, had I given that to you and I can appeal, he says, but had I given that to you then, you wouldn't be where you are now being stretched. Come on, to believe me for more. Sometimes we just get a little something and we're content. No, he says, where you're at is beyond believing for your daily provision. You are believing for provision for a move of God. So I got to get you in the position where you trust me to give you what I need. I will give you what you need. And he said, had I given you that little bit in comparison, you wouldn't be desperate. Come on. Sometimes God will let you get in a place of desperation. So you cry out and you come to the end of yourself. And you know, if God does not do it, come on, it will not be done. And that's exactly where he wants us to be. To walk in this level of glory that is coming upon us, we have to know, as we said before, it's all God. I need for you to believe me for, for, for buildings because I give you all these visions. And I need, because I can't do it. Just this, um, I had to repent yesterday. I told you I was going to be transparent. We are planning a trip next week back to the Georgia, South Carolina area for a full week. I'm leaving on Monday, won't be returning until the previous, until the previous Monday. And I've been doing some traveling over the last couple of years. And in that traveling, Holy Spirit was saying, I'm going to teach you what you need to do. In other words, I want to show you how to travel. I want to know what you like, what type of room you like, what are your accommodations? And so Tuesday, I'm making the accommodations and there's certain hotels we like because of the amenities. And he told me before I even began to plan the trip, he says, and don't even dare look at the cost. We're going to be doing some ministry in the churches that we have in that area. He says, here's the vision. Do not look at how much it will cost you. Yes, Lord. Well, I'm sitting there Tuesday morning doing all this stuff. And the first thing I do, I'm going and looking at a hotel, not really what we like, but because we're going to be there for seven nights, I'm settling. And so I go and tell my husband about it. He says, but that's not what the Lord said, right? He, and I said, you're right, you're right, you're right. I came back, I repented, and said, God, my little uh, three-year-old grandson here is with us. And when he gets in trouble, he says, I chary, I chary. So I said, God, I chary. I chary, I chary. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry. So I went back and I canceled that room and got a room that we really like. Guess what today? I'm sharing with a friend of mine just what I'm sharing with you, how the Holy Spirit is really working on me to bring me to a place of completion. Come on. To bring, hey, Tobasha, to bring me to a place of completion in my faith concerning receiving from God to do God. 
So I'm not talking about just getting money to do Nikita, but when God is sending you to do him, he's going to provide for you. As I'm sharing with her, and she shared her testimony, and I went on about my business, and then she texted me and said, Nikita, what is your cash app? So I gave it to her, and then she texted me back, check your cash app. Lo and behold, every penny that I need for the hotel accommodations is covered. See, God says, I got to show you. I got to show you. In other words, as it says, Jesus, unquestionable evidence and convincing demonstration. Hey, God, convincing demonstration. When you're honest with God and you tell him, because he already know anyway. I don't know why we're trying to front with God. He, all, he knows anyway. And when we are honest, he will meet us at our point of need and by his grace. My God, and his faithfulness, he will do in us what needs to be done. Why? Because he's chosen us. It says right here in, in Acts 1 and 2, he said, until the day in which he was taken up after that through the Holy Ghost had given commandments in the Amplified, it says, and instructions unto the apostles whom he has chosen. Are you chosen? Are you chosen? That means he's already made a decision about who you are and how he's going to use you, but yet he knows there's some preparing, some other things, some finishing touches that needs to be done. Let's go to Mark 16. That's just a little bit of my story. Amen. And um, one thing that I've learned that when we are called to minister God's word, you know, we read about David and, 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 and Saul and, all them folk and Peter, yeah, uh, all them. But when you're ministering and you have a fresh testimony, when you can give a, 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 a testimony about what God is doing in you now, yes, we got that. But is, is he still working on people? Is he still meeting us at our point? Of, is he still preparing us for the work? So let's go to Mark 16. Let's go to verse 9. Again, I'm not going to read every account, but if Trish would like to put those different accounts in the chat so you can have that for reference, um, so be it. And sometimes when I to myself, uh, I'm talking so fast, so I'm trying to slow down and not bring my words together. That's that southern thing as well. He says, uh, this is um, Luke 16, verse 9. Now, when Jesus was ri risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive at the had been seen of her, believe not. Afterward, that he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And a more detailed version of that is in Luke 24. And when they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they, them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And so here we see in this uh, account of Jesus' appearance, he's dealing with the disciples in their unbelief. He upbraided them for their unbelief. So he's dealing with them, showing them, um, in other words, he was showing them themselves. Sometimes we don't always see the fullness of who we are. And it takes, when we read the word, Holy Spirit, a lot of times the word would quicken in us. And we know it's not just for us to go preach to somebody else, but it comes to us before it comes through us. Come on. And when it comes to us, it is doing the work in us that needs to be done. So when it comes through you, that word has a witness. Come on, somebody. That word has a witness that it will do the work that the word was sent to do. Praise God. And so the word that the Lord gave me, what the Holy Spirit has been 
beat me upside the head with, and Trish, I didn't put this in there, so please forgive me, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Some of you could probably quote it by heart. I know I could. I quote it. I can quote it, but now I'm actually learning more about it. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of, I'm sorry, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And the Amplified says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, or craving and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love of a calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. So I said, okay, Holy Spirit, obviously I'm dealing with the spirit of fear. I'm dealing with the spirit of fear. I'm dealing with the spirit of fear that I'm not going to have what I need to do this. And when you make, and when you really think about it, it doesn't make sense. That's why I know it's a spirit. God didn't give us this spirit of fear, but nonetheless, it's a spirit. It's still a spirit. And it tries to influence us in our thinking. So here we see the disciples, their thing was unbelief, and their unbelief was also fueled by their fear because they were in hiding for fear of the Jews. Come on. And so they're in their unbelief. Now Jesus had to deal with them in their unbelief before he ascends, and they are released into the upper room and receive the Holy Spirit. So there's some things that God, Jesus, had to deal with. Here in this particular scripture, he's dealing with them in unbelief. Why? Look what it says in, in the 15th verse. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel every every creature. He that believeth. So he has to deal with their unbelief because he says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. So their unbelief had to be dealt with. And fear would lead to unbelief or unbelief fear. That, as we say now, South Bay calls kin. Praise God. Fear and unbelief, they're very much related. And we can say we believe God. In fact, to me, this is probably one of the greatest revelations that the Holy Spirit has given me. He says, your level of receiving will be evident in your response. Come on, somebody. Your level of receiving will be evident in your response. So if I truly believe and have received the word of God that he said to me, it's going to show up in my response. And the beautiful thing about God is if you don't have it, no problem. He's there. The Holy Spirit's job is to get you there. The Holy Spirit's job is to come in and to fill that gap with the grace, by his grace, by grace through faith, you are saved. By grace through faith, you're going to receive. By faith, I'm sorry, by grace through faith, everything we do, walking in the Spirit, is going to be by grace, and I say by God's great grace, come on, by God's great grace, through faith, through our believing. And that's why the enemy really wants to just, just call. I can't speak for you, but I'm saying, come on, I know it's not right, but it's real. Come on, right there. I know it's not right, but it's real. Come on. And we have to be willing to admit, yes, God, I know how I should be. I know what the word says, but God, my response. My response is showing me that I don't have it, but I want it because I need it. I need it to believe for kingdom provision for the kingdom assignment. I need it. And so here he says, verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. My God, in my name, in my name, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Jesus. Oh God, I want that to be my testimony. I want that to be my testimony. It may be, he may be showing me some areas 
where it comes to my in, in provision. But God, if there's any unbelief in me, come on, I, I want to dealt with. I want to dealt with because I want to be able to stand resolute. Come on, resolute confidently convinced that he is all who he say he is and if he say he's going to do it that's exactly what's going to happen but what but what normally happens is this we'll get a ring of word from god and because we believe it but at the same time at least for nikita now my mind is trying to figure out how he's going to do it well how is he going to do it and we pretty much kind of resolve in ourselves, oh, it's going to happen this way. And when it doesn't happen that way, then we're disappointed. And, and because, But I didn't tell you that. That's what you've been walking with. Again, check your thoughts, change your thoughts, challenge your thoughts, and then channel your thoughts. Because out of the, out of the abundance of the heart, you're the center of your emotions, that's where you're going to speak from. So I had to change my language, change, change my thoughts, change my language. Then verse 19, which I just absolutely positively love, 19 and 20. It says, so then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set on the right hand of God. And this is the actual 40th day here in verse 19. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. The 20th verse in the Amplified said, and they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord kept working with them and confirming the message by the attesting signs and miracles that closely accompany it. Amen. So be it. So Jesus had to deal with them in this account of Mark. He chose to say how they were rebuked, how they were upbraided for their unbelief, okay? All right, let's go over to John. No, let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke. Luke, um, primarily the appearances of Jesus is found in Luke 24, but again, I'm not going to read all of that, but I will go to Luke um Ooh, okay. Let's go to Luke 44. Luke 24, 44. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, King James Version, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was wet yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Now, this is him dealing with the two gentlemen on the road to Emmaus. Then, verse 45, then opened he their understanding, come on, that they might understand the scriptures. Oh, God, I pray right now, Father God, there's anything that we're yet to understand, come on, that you will open our understanding. If there's anything that we're lacking in our knowing of you and how you want to use us and work through us, how, how we're to use our power and our authority, come on, God, open up our understanding. Open it up. Open it up, Father, in Jesus' name. Verse 46, and he said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise and to raise and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And he says, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. I'm sorry, this, this is not with the two people. This He's not with his disciples. And I'm sorry. Um, let's go over to, I'm sorry, Luke 24, verse 36. I'm trying not to read everything, but I don't want to miss say anything either. So let's go to Luke 24, back to verse 36. And as they spake, the two men talking to the disciples, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, peace be unto you. So again, he's, he's putting their fears to rest. He said, peace. 
He says, verse 40, 37, but they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. Verse 38, and he said unto them, why are ye troubled and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Again, you got to check your thoughts. You got to check your thoughts. And then he begins to say what I read here in verse 44, how he said to them, these things had to happen. And he opened up their understanding. And he began to, again, reiterate why he had to go through what he had to go through. In other words, he's showing them everything happened, it had to happen. And sometimes in our walk with God, we don't always understand the things that we've had to walk through. Why did I have to go through that? Why did it have to go that way? Well, God had you told me I would have left the job. The folk didn't have to lie on me and lay my, and put my name out there, scandalize my name. Why did it go that way, God? So there are some things that we yet need to understand. So again, I'm praying, God, open my understanding that I might not just only understand the scriptures, but what has happened in my walk. Because as a witness, as we will see, in Acts 1 and 8, that this thing is so important that Jesus said that I want to give you power that you may be a witness. And we don't want to be a tainted witness. Come on. We don't, we don't want to say one thing out of our mouth, but yet in our heart, we have an awe or we have question with God, Jesus. And so verse um, 48 says, and ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. In other words, they had to listen to instructions. He was giving them specific instructions of what they are to do. So I'm believing that there's going to be specific things, come on, leading up to Pentecost that God is yet going to give us to do in order to position us to receive. Come on, somebody. To receive whatever this greater glory will look like, I don't know, but I sense it in my knower is going to be like nothing that we've seen to date. More than 120 people, come on. More than just one place, but all over this world, hallelujah, those of us, those of us who have been prepared is going to receive something very great. Then verse 50, again, this is on the 40th day, and he led them out as far as to Bethany. He lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the, temp in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. So in Luke's account, he's dealing with their thoughts. He's dealing with their fear. He's reiterating some things. He's giving them understanding. So they, because we need that. We're going to be a witness. We need to understand. The, the scripture says, you know, get wisdom is the principal thing. But with all that getting, get understanding. So it's very important that we understand who this man Jesus is and what the, the, the next move of God is going to be and our role in it. I want to go to um, John for my next account. And again, just want to reiterate, finishing touches, reassurances, fully, being fully persuaded, resting in God's grace that whatever yet needs to be done in us, he's there to do the work, those final steps those final steps. Uh, there's a lot here. And just like in Luke, we see here, is it Luke or Mark? No, no, Mark. Just like in Mark, here in John, we see Jesus giving a word to Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. So we may not be on this call, but even now when I look on the internet, YouTube, there's this one particular guy, and he's still talking about how God can't use women. I'm like, okay, you all need to settle that. Because to me, 
right here when when Jesus sends Mary, Mary Magdalene, out of whom he cast out seven devils, it says in Mark, and here he sends her specifically to the disciples to tell them to meet him in Galilee. If God doesn't use women, then why does Jesus do this? Why? Why? To me, the very first evangelist witnesses of his resurrection were women. And so we got to settle it in our hearts. Other people may never accept us as being carriers of God's word, but we have to settle it. We have to settle it. And I believe with the group that we have here, we have. But again, I'm just noticing as I was reading, wow, Jesus, he speaks to a woman, okay? He tells her to go and to tell the disciples. Verse 18, Luke, John 20, verse 18. It says, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her, okay? Verse 19, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, come on, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, peace be unto you. Peace. Peace. And peace is not always the absence of trouble, but peace is knowing his presence. Come on. So peace is not about the absence of trouble, but about the presence of God. He says, my peace I leave with you. Another scripture says, my joy I leave with you. Another in John, he says, the same love that my father has for me, he has for you. And so over again, in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, again, putting my stuff out there, if God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, love and a sound mind. So it's going to take power to deal with the spirit of fear. It's going to take a, a, a knowing of the love of God. And then that sound mind, oh my God, they said it many years ago and it's yet true. The mind is the battlefield. The battlefield, the battlefield, not just the playground, but it's the battlefield. Come on. It's the battlefield where all this stuff goes on in our mind. The spirit and the flesh, they're lusting against each other. They're warring. My God. And so we have to take control of our thoughts. Praise God. But he says, peace be unto you. And we had said, and when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. So here now, he's giving them the commission. We're going to see it also in Matthew 28. But he's commissioning, just as the Father sent me, has sent me, so I'm going to send you. We have to know that we're being sent. That what we're doing in this next move is not of us, but it's all God. Come on. And when he had said this, come on, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Whosoever sins ye remit, they're remitted unto them. And whoever sins ye retain, they are retained. And I want to read that in the Amplified in verse 22. It says, and having said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit, verse 23. Now having received the Holy Spirit and being led and directed by him, if you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of anyone, they are retained. Here he's giving them heavenly authority. What Jesus is giving unto his, his disciples and apostles is nothing to take lightly. When we are sent by God and we speak for God, it's very serious. And so there has to be a death to self because we can look at a person and we think they don't deserve whatever. My, my, God has shown me his grace multiplied to my grace and peace be multiplied unto you. He's shown me that through my own family. My daughter 
some situations and circumstances. And when I look at, when I rode, went down to South Carolina on this past Monday, the 6th, not, not, um, uh, yeah, not this Monday, but Monday before last. And when I came back up the road on that Wednesday, what happened Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, nobody could have told me it would have happened like that. And so God said, I need, I need for you to see my grace is more than it is sufficient. And so whatever I, I send you to, people I may send you to, don't judge it by what you think. Don't judge it by what you see. Come on. Don't even judge it by what you think they deserve. Because, yeah, there were some things, some decisions that were made that made no sense. But myself, too. If God kept me in my folly and my foolishness and brought me to this season of my life, I dare not, I dare not retain. In other words, don't present the gospel. But being led of Holy Spirit, he will tell us what to do, where to go, what not. What, that, there's no substitute for the leading of Holy Spirit. Now, some say in this particular passage, when he says receive, that was the life of God. It's like, um, some say it's like um, in the uh, in Genesis when God breathed and hey God breathed the breath of life into Adam. It's like Jesus was now breathing the life, come on, the life into his disciples, the God life. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit did not come until Acts 2, okay? Two different, two different receivings of the Holy Spirit. Verse 24, it says, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Demas, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I see it, I see in his hands the print of the nail, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Okay. He was pretty adamant about that. After eight days again, his disciples were with him, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and he stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then he said to Thomas, okay? Now he's going to deal specifically with Thomas. Thomas was the one who was absent and did not witness, did not see him face to face in person uh, in, in, in a living color. Come on. So here comes Jesus. Jesus said, okay, Thomas, you missed that, bro. I'm sorry. You should have been in place. But no, because of his compassion and his grace, and because Thomas was going to be, was one of the ones who was going to be used, he needed to have that convincing proof as well. My God. That, this, when I read this, is that shows me the heart of God. That no one, no one, is left behind if you truly desire. My God. He says, I want to believe, but I got to see it. He didn't say, I would never believe. He says, but I got to see it to believe. And Jesus comes back. He says, okay. He said unto Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hand and reach hither thy hand and thrust it in my side and be not faithless, but believing. Don't be faithless and incredulous but stop your unbelief and believe, okay? And he's going to further explain what he means by that. And then Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Look what he says in verse 29. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen, thou hast believed. That's what it took for Thomas to believe. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. That's all of us. We have, now that's some of us had some of those visitations. And if you have, God bless you. I have not physically seen Jesus. I have not been caught up into heaven yet or a vision yet. I'll put that yet on there. But I believe. I believe. But it took Thomas seeing to believe. But Jesus still showed up and gave him what he needed in order to be fully persuaded and convinced because that's what it was going to take for them to walk this thing out. And then verse 30 says, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence 
of his disciples which are not written in this book. So in those 40 days, he was teaching them about the kingdom of God and showing them many signs that they would believe. It says in verse 30 in the Amplified, there are also many other signs and miracles which Jesus performed in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. So we believe, even though we have not physically seen him, some of us, I have not, Maybe some of you have. But Jesus will still give you demonstrations of himself so you can believe without doubting. Just like the father whose son was just tossed to and fro. And Jesus says, all things are possible if thou believest. And he said, honestly, Master, Lord, I believe. Come on but help my unbelief, help my unbelief. And some of us, we know what God can do, but sometimes in the delay, we feel it's a denial. And because some things have not happened the way we thought it should have happened in the past, there is some level of unbelief or fear that it's not gonna happen. Or if I say it, what if you don't show up? Well. You don't say what he doesn't say. You say what he says. Jesus said, I only do or say what I hear the Father say. The words that you hear, they're not my words, but the words of him who sent me. And so it's very important that we settle some things. We settle some things. And I just pray that after tonight that you would ask Holy Spirit. And I heard what Apostle Nikita said and all what she's dealing with. Father, is there anything in me? that yet needs to be dealt with. Is there anything in me? Well, we're not done yet. That's the first two appearances of Jesus. Then we go over to uh, chapter 21. We see where they're, they go fishing. Peter says, I'm going to fish. And they, uh, the other disciples, and is that all of the 11? It gives you the account of that, all who was there on the beach or on the ship, on the boat, um, here in John 21. And the main thing that we, for me, the main takeaway out of John 21 is the restoration of Peter, the restoring of Peter. Mm -hmm. The restoring of Peter. Verse 14 of John 21, it says, now, this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, Son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Verse 16, he saith unto him again the second time, Simon Peter, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest but I love thee, he said unto him, feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Now, when I read this in the Amplified, it gives a little bit more um, uh, amplification or uh, detail, definition, when he says love. When um, Verse 15, when they had eaten, this is the Amplified Classic, when they had eaten, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Others do with reasoning, intentional, spiritual devotion as one loves the father. He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Get this, that I have deep, instinctive, personal affection for you as for a close friend. He said to him, feed my lambs. In the 16th verse, the only thing that's different 
he says, then as a shepherd, tend my sheep. And then in the 17th verse, it says, again, feed my sheep. And so we all know that Peter, it was um, Jesus had warned Peter that he would deny him three times. And of course, Peter didn't believe that he would. And it happened that Peter did deny Jesus three times, as Jesus had said, like Jesus didn't know what he was talking about. But sometimes we don't know what's in us. And God would allow circumstances and situations to show us our true condition. Come on. And when he shows us ourselves, I can't speak for you, but there's a grieving. Because like right now, I don't feel I don't feel too great about myself. But I know God is, is getting me where I need to be. If he truly loves us, he's going to show us our true condition. Because he does not want us to fail. And so here is Peter. In fact, he even said at one point, go tell Peter and my disciples to meet me or go ahead of me into Galilee. So he specifically called Peter's name. And so here, as they're on the beach, cook some fish, enjoying some fellowship with Jesus, and he addresses the elephant, as we would say, the elephant in the room. And he asked Peter three times, Simon, son of John, son of John, son of John, do you love me? Because saints of God, we can't do this unless we've given him a full devotion. None of us. In other words, there's, there's nothing of Nikita that's my own agenda. Nothing. That I've, in other words, there's a song that says withholding nothing. And as far as I know, God, there is nothing. There's nothing I want to do more than to please you. Nothing. There's nothing in this life that I desire more than you. And wherever I have failed you, God, restore me. Restore me. And so I'm praying tonight, if there's anything that you feel like you failed, God, you knew better, and you really thought you, you would never do it, but because of not knowing or whatever fear, Whatever the case may be, God says, in these 40 days, I'm restoring. I'm putting all the broken pieces back together again. I'm bringing you to a place where you can stand and be my witness, stand flat-footed with boldness and courage, doubting nothing, being a woman, being divorced, be whatever that man would say disqualify you. He says, oh no, I'm fully restoring you by my grace. My God, receive it. Receive it, hallelujah. These next, I guess, 17 days, so that's what, 23 more days? 23 more days, I guess it is. I guess I'm doing my math right. 23, 40, is it snow? Yeah, now now I'm going to stop and do some math. Help me, Lord. Yeah, 23 days until the 40th day. God says, I'm going to work on some stuff. I'm going to work on some finishing touches, some refining, some tweaking, because I need you. I don't need, I don't need, and okay, I hear you, Holy Spirit. Trish, I didn't give you this one, but I hear it. Come on. John, John 12. Wait a minute, hold on. Let me let me stop until I get it. I don't want to send you to the wrong place. Hold up one minute. I hear you, Holy Spirit. John 14. Yes. John 14, 30 and 31. I'm going to read it from the Amplified. He's, this is Jesus. He says, I will not talk with you much more, for the prince, evil genius, ruler of the world is coming. And he has no claim on me. He has nothing in common 
with me. And there's nothing in me that belongs to him. Come on. And he has no power over me. But Satan is coming, and I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know, be convinced that I love the Father and that I only do what the Father has instructed me to do. I act in full agreement with his orders. That's my prayer tonight. That is my prayer that God, during these next 23 days, hallelujah, leading up to the 40th day, come on, and even on into the 50th day, because even in the upper room, they still dealing with some stuff. Even in the upper room, they were still dealing with some stuff. My God. That I don't want to have nothing in common with the enemy. Nothing he can use. No, no, no kind of remote enemy that he can, he can uh, manipulate me. Nothing. So, Father God, we thank you for your great grace. And my last set of scriptures is Matthew 8, 28, I'm sorry, Matthew 28. And sometimes I get so frustrated with myself, I know what I mean to say, and I'm saying something else. I'm like, God, people are going to think I'm just, I don't know, God. But anyway, maybe that's keeping the pride down, I don't know. But yeah, I'm, I'm just telling y'all all my business tonight. I'm just, just letting it all hang out. Praise God. Matthew 28. And let's start at verse 16. Matthew 28, verse 16. It says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But guess what? But some doubted. Jesus. Mm. Oh, God. And Jesus came and spake of them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things Whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. And I want to read that in the Amplified, starting at verse 17. And when they saw him, they fell down and worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus approached and breaking the silence, said to them, all authority all power of rule in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go then and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all the days, perpetually, uniformly, on every occasion, oh my God, to the very close and consummation of the age. Amen. So let it be. We have to be convinced that God, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit is with us. Perpetually, he doesn't come and go. In the church that I grew up in, that, you know, if you, if you sin, they say the Holy Ghost leaves. I'm like, okay. But what I've come to understand through the scripture, the Holy Spirit is grieved, but he doesn't leave. Come on. He's grieved, and it should grieve you that he's grieved, but he doesn't leave. Come on. He's with us perpetually, uniformly. In other words, this thing is not about your feelings. Sometimes I don't feel it. But no, we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. So we don't have to feel it, but we need to know it. Come on. We need to know it with everything that's within us that God is with us, and on every occasion. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And so here Jesus is affirming and confirming to his disciples that I'm sending you to do something, and I'm giving you my power and my authority to do it. 
And I, even though you have my power and my authority, it still takes me being with you. And because you're doing me, I'm going to be with you. And so, Father God, I am just grateful on tonight. For the finishing work, the finishing touches that you're doing on this vessel. And I, and I believe you wouldn't just give me a word that was just for me to share if it was just for me. And so, Father God, I speak now to my brothers and sisters on this line, those who may sit on another platform, that they would seek you, Father God, that they would press in and say, Father, is there anything in me that yet needs to be dealt with? Here we are, Lord. We lay our souls bare on the altar and we're saying, have thine own way, God. You are the part of we are the clay. Come on. If there's anything that's marred, anything that's marred in us, God, we're asking you to make us over again. Complete the work. Complete the work that needs to be done in us. So there's nothing missing, nothing lacking as we move forward into this glorious, glorious move of God. That's it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. That's pretty awesome, Nikita. And very timely. And I fully get it. And I think probably everyone here gets it. And um you know, I think we're in a very, very significant time. These 40 days that you're talking about, you know, we're on the counting of the Omer, going up to 50 to the Pentecost. And I'm really, really excited in that the 40 days for us ends in Caledon at our meeting on the 1st. Jesus. Yeah, mm. that's going to be, we don't know what to expect, but it's going to be awesome. We're just going to sit and tarry. It said tarry. We're going to tarry. Mm. Mm. But yeah, these times, I, I, was, I was thinking of the master potter that mm -hmm. we're in the master potter's hand. And he is, you know, creating a masterpiece vessel in each of us. And, you know, it's it's a specialty, the master potter, to remove all the, the little, you know, things, flaws and the little stones and make the clay beautiful, and then make the vessel complete. And then he paints on the beautiful colors all over the, the vessel. Mm. I think we're in that time where the colors are being put upon us. Jesus. And, um, and then he, after the colors, he puts the glaze on, the shine. Mm. And I believe that. Shine. Oh, God. Holy Spirit. <laughs> where he puts the glaze and the shine and the glory mm. upon us. Mm. Oh. Such a, a heightened, incredible time. And you can miss it. You can miss it. If you have to be so sensitive to God, you know, even last night I had this dream, you know, and um, just this little dream. I was putting on different outfits, trying to find an outfit. And I put on this outfit. It looked pretty terrible. And I looked at it. And my, I looked at my sister. I said, this is this is awful. Looks like, and I, I said the name of a person, which is like, like an older church lady. But it was a person in my mind. And, you know, I laughed. I said, this looks like that person. <laughs> and my sister in the dream, who is not a Christian, looked at me and said, you have to stop branding people. And mm. I woke up and I just thought, you know what? That was the Holy Spirit speaking through my unsaved younger sister, <laughs> telling me to stop doing that. And I have really to examine myself because it's it's just a way Jamaicans are, you know, we like to laugh, we like to mock, we like to make fun. And it's kind of, I think it's harmless because nobody's getting hurt. But God doesn't think it's harmless. You know, that's what I feel like he's saying. It's, you know, you you are, that's somebody I love. Mm. You know, and I really, it just kind of shook me. I'm like, okay. And, you know, 
so little thing is to me that was a little thing but it was a big thing to god and it's like what you're saying in these 40 days that, that that's like the little rough stones and things in the clay mm -hmm. that it's that steals from it becoming the masterpiece that he wants it to be you know thank you for saying that or it's like a priceless vessel you know there's a vessel that you can a clay vessel you can purchase for 20 bucks mm -hmm. And there's a clay vessel you can purchase for a million bucks. Oh, Jesus. And he's making the million bucks vessel in all of us that's priceless because it, it's it, he's going to fill it with himself. Yes. And um, put the glaze on with the Holy Spirit. Shy. So wow. Lord, help us to just get what oh, have that sensitivity in our spirit mm. to recognize the little things like that, where Holy Spirit says, don't do that. Don't mm. say, watch what you're saying, watch what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. the finishing touches, you know, we have been prepared and being prepared for so long. But as you said, Nikita, this is the the final. And, and he knows that we have willing hearts. He knows we love him. And he knows we're going to be obedient. Once we see it, we're like, oh, my gosh. Sorry, Lord. And I'm sorry. <laughs> going to do that again <laughs> so pretty awesome you got me stirred i got me excited i'm like yes i gotta zero in focus in in these next 23 days until stop and until pentecost wow sharon you look like you're ready to burst out <laughs> yeah i'm pretty full thank you nikita <laughs> Um, he was, when you were saying, uh, in John 21, 14, Jesus said, lovest thou me mm -hmm. times and then be my sheep. I was thinking back to George, um, Mueller in the 1800s. He was, he always said his number one job was to be happy in the Lord. And that would frustrate his leaders <laughs> like crazy. Um, he ended up being responsible for over 10,000 orphans during yeah. that time, right? And he would not ask for help from any humans. <laughs> he, But he always counted on those Orphans were always paid for, like their food was always covered, their yes, clothing, come on. everything, right, was looked after, and all provision was looked after. And he would continually say his only job was to delight himself in the Lord. And everyone would think he must be one of the most stressed out <laughs> guys <laughs> that there could be but every morning they would see him walking in the hills smiling mm -hmm. looking up and speaking to god right and even like they needed bread imagine for ten thousand orphans and he started orphanages all over the world he, he, they would need bread and they'd have no bread and then a bread truck would be driving through the hills and then would break down right near right near one of the orphanages that was short on bread and then they would ask well <laughs> do you need any bread <laughs> and there wow. was enough for everybody yes so, you know mm. that's what it reminds me of that when we rest in him and we focus on him he knows exactly what our need is if we go into a in place of intimacy with him and ask him, how do you see the situation, Lord? Yes. And we open our requests with thanksgiving already. But when we keep our peace, keep our joy in the midst of the chaos or in the midst of the trouble, then he and look at and ask him, how are you dealing with this situation, Lord? You know, rather than wrestling demons and all kinds of things, it's his job to fight the enemy. It's not our job. Mm -hmm. It's our job to stay to in intimacy yeah. with him, right? Mm -hmm. And intimacy intimidates the enemy. So the more intimate you're going to be with Jesus, <laughs> the more the enemy is going to run in the opposite direction. And that means fear has to go too, because fear is from the enemy too. 
So that's what I'm working on these days, making myself happy in the Lord, focusing on intimacy with him, and then watch the enemy squirm his way out of things. Thank you. And when you said the third thing that he, the thing that he said three times also is be my sheep. Mm -hmm. So that means I need to be walking in the hills without a care in the world, right? Yeah, like sheep, they're not walking around worried about where their food's coming from or where their provision is coming from, right? Yes, ma'am. Back then. Um, so I got to focus more on that. I don't know if that's for everybody, but, and then he gave me the scripture in 1 Corinthians 1, um, 1 to 5. It says, I am always thanking my God for you because this is, Paul's greeting to mm -hmm. the people um, because he has given you such free and open access to his grace through your union with Jesus the Messiah. In him, you have been made extravagantly rich in every way. You have been endowed with a wealth of inspired utterance and riches that come from your intimate knowledge of him. And I just thought that just tied in the whole thing perfectly and which translation is that sharon that's in, in the passion, passion. okay mm -hmm. thank what, you hallelujah what verse it's first corinthians one verses one to five mm -hmm. thank you very awesome thank you extravagantly rich ladies in every way. In every way. But also in inspired utterance. And what is that? That's prophetic utterances that he speaks to us. If we spend time listening to him, going mm -hmm. into our quiet place and just communing with him, the answers will come. But I found the key for myself was asking him in that time, what's your perspective on this problem? So I wasn't looking at it through my lenses. Yes. They, they can be tainted a little bit sometimes. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I have lenses too. And I love George Mueller. You know that I always uh, throw George Mueller up to God. I'm like, hey, jo God, <laughs> remember George Mueller? <laughs> you know, because we today it's all about marketing and promotion. George Mueller had no marketing plan, no promotional plan other than God. And that's the way I think it should be. And I'm like, God, George Mueller. <laughs> yes. That's the way I ran my advertising company for 13 years. And we never advertised one day. And we had huge clients like the NBA, Sony, the TD Bank, you know, and it was all the Lord just brought them to us wow Jesus. Awesome. i love it thank you lord yeah Papa carol let's hear from you well thank you nikita for you opening up your heart and being so transparent to um to us tonight and it just even to me i just say thank you and um thank you that just to just hearing your passion and your love that you have for the Lord. And, and uh, you can tell what your motivational gift is because you're very, very hard on yourself. And, uh, and uh, because again, lots of times when we are so black and white, then what we do for ourselves, we don't give any gray areas. And I see you as a woman of God that it's like, it's either black or white. There's no gray areas. It's just the truth. And that's all there is. And so um, I just love uh, you, how you just were tonight and how you were just sharing everything from your heart and, and the scriptures tonight. And what I really felt that the Lord and even as uh, Apostle Faith even said about the color and the light. And I just thought again of Isaiah 60, where it says to arise. 
you know, and, and we're to shine. But in the Amplified Bible, it says that arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Mm. Rise to a new life Jesus. and shine the radiance with the glory of the Lord for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. God's glory has risen upon us and he is Amen. preparing us and getting us ready for the dunamis power. That's what he's saying. That's what I could hear again tonight, you know, through your message. God is saying, I'm preparing you, you know, and it's like, he knows our hearts. He knows, knows who we are. He knows that we're hungry. He knows that we're thirsty. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those that are thirsting after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. They shall be filled. And God is filling us. And your message tonight was just, just getting us all stirred up, you know, just refired with the fire, refiner's fire of God's fire of what he's doing. But also, as you know, this was God is saying, he's called us and he's making us light up. And I felt that what God was saying to me, and as he was even staring to me, uh, even yesterday, he was saying, I'm having all of my ecclesia to light up. And that light is full of colors, colors, like he made colors. the rainbow. But there is colors, I think, then which that go beyond even our understanding of, of what we are yet to see of the colors in which that God is causing us to be as his lights, because he is the father of lights in whom he is. And so Amen. I just know that, you know, tonight what you were doing is you were just lighting us up. But also I just felt, you know, it's 1 Corinthians uh, 13 and even Sharon, you brought out that with 1 Corinthians chapter 1. But 1 Corinthians 13, it tells us to pursue love. Mm -hmm. And it's all about love. And that's what I was hearing from you, Nikita. Loving God. You know, being loving God, being obedient to him, and yet humbling ourselves and mm. saying, God, we know that there still is this fear, you know, and your love casts out all fear. Yes. And Lord, but we know that there still is fears. We know that there's times we still doubt, at least I do. And, uh, but again, we know that the Holy Spirit doesn't let us keep going down that bunny trail. Right. He convicts right. us sharp. I mean, he just, can't, I mean, sharp, you know, he doesn't let us go there. So he just pulls us in because of his love. And I think that's why he's saying that we just need to realize how much he is lighting us up, how mm -hmm. much that we are shining for him, mm -hmm. how, how much, and all of it takes place because we are yielding our will, our heart to his. And because we're doing that, then we are pursuing love. And that is what's going to come out, out of us, is the character and the nature of God, which you were bringing out tonight so beautifully. And so we just thank the Lord, because when the character and the nature comes out of us in love, then the gifts of the Spirit will just flow so beautifully by the Spirit of the Lord. So thank you, Nikita. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. God thank you, Apostle. Honey. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Yeah. Jesus. As I'm just hearing, even in what you're saying, it's the same, you know, the colors and the shine. Yeah. Colors yeah. and the shine. Colors and the shine. Colors and the shine. We yeah. are his treasures. We are his clay vessels, right? <laughs> and he, through the fire. Whoa. That's where the translucency, the transparency comes forth through the, the most expensive china is the one that you can hold it up to the light, right? Yeah. And that the light shines through it. And that's what he's doing in our lives yeah. because of his love that he has for us. But he knows we have been crying out. We've been keeping focused on Jesus. We're, we're crying out and we're asking. We're asking, asking, seeking, knocking. We're contending. <laughs> We're, you know, and we are enjoying life, as Sharon says. Let us enjoy what all in which that God has given unto us. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength and our salvation. 
And yes. he wants us to have life and life more abundantly. And so we just continue on to live in that glory. And he's going ahead of us and he's setting us up. So everything we're seeing, we're seeing it in hindsight. Like, you know, when we set the date to June 1st for the next mm -hmm. meeting, we had no clue that it was 10 days before that it was the exactly fourth 10 days. And it was after we realized, oh my gosh. So he, he's planning this. <laughs> he's <laughs> setting it up. He's setting up our lives every day for this. And day. You know, and if we grasp that, then we can really get excited and our faith will grow and build because we know he's up to something and it's all going, it's all on to something and it's going somewhere because he's doing it. We're just stumbling along as we go figuring out what he's doing, but he's doing some amazing things right now. Yes. I'm excited. Amen. Winds of change. <laughs> 